Hey guys, I, my name is Seth After. I am at Creativation AFCI 2018. We're in Phoenix and it's the annual trade show where all the newest and hottest products come out. I am in the Emerald Creek booth. Emerald Creek is a craft company from Canada. I just started working with them. We created a line of embossing powders. There's seven flavors. We call it baked texture. And we're calling them embossing powders for artists because they do great things. You can use them just like you would use a traditional embossing powder, say with a rubber stamp, but this uh, line will kind of take your embossing powders to sort of a crunchy, shiny, uh, scratchy level. So I'm gonna demo some and just show you some of what you can do. I just have a background here that I painted. This is just a little bit of a, a chipboard, artboard. And what I'm gonna do is um, work around here using a number of different um, uh, techniques for embossing. So of course I'm not ready. So I'm gonna have to go down here and get something in my stash. What I'm gonna get are uh, stencils. And hopefully this doesn't take too long. Okay, there we go. So I have this series of stencils that I'm gonna use here with a number of different embossing powders. Uh, I am going to keep this grungy. I'm gonna use this splat stencil. And one of the reasons why I like this one for embossing is because it has a good amount of space. Sometimes when you emboss with something that's too thin, you don't get much of the embossing powder. So this is like a lot of bang for your buck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a sponge. I'm gonna get my embossing pad. And I am just going to pounce. And if you've used an embossing pad before, you know it's glue. So it does get sticky and sometimes it can pull your stencil up. So just a quick tip is just hold it down with your finger. Um, okay. And what I'm gonna do is Remember it's in that corner because I can't really see it, but I'm going to add another of the same stencil and I'm going to pounce through. I'm going to add it three times because three is one of those numbers in art that is sort of magical. And then I'm going to add right up here just a little bit. Um, you might notice I'm going off the edge. I tend to like to use products even when they're my own in broken up ways so that every time I use it, it's a little different. And it's kind of obvious when you take a stencil and stick it in the center. To me, it's just more interesting when you put it on the edge and off to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap that. I always try to remember to cap my pad. And then I'm going to get a piece of paper, which is key for embossing. And I'm gonna place it under. And then I'm gonna find some flavors. Uh, this one is called Deep Sea. The idea behind this was that it would have some rich blues and greens, but also some clear crystals. So what ends up happening is that it's semi-translucent or semi-opaque. So you can see uh, a little bit of what's underneath and what, uh, what's underneath will affect what is above. So if I do this on yellow, it turns a little green. And if I do it on blue, it stays more in the blue range. So I'm gonna just shake it a little bit. And as if by magic, that appears. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a different one, but I'm going to have to put this aside because I don't want to mix my colors. I'm going to grab another sheet. Do that. And up here I'm going to take, um, yes, let's take this one. I'm going to pour this one out. And this one, you, you, know, you can check this one out. This is um, a, bla a black base powder, but it has these stones in it that have been grounded up. And so it gives it a much more textural feel and um, a very, very, very variegated pattern. The deep sea here will, will dry like um, the surface of the sea. It's very sleek. This is called Rocky Road, and this one's going to be more like your driveway and your asphalt. So I'm going to do that, shake it out. Okay. You can see it there. It's kind of cool just like that. And then I'm going to put that aside and get my one piece of paper. And I think I'm going to go with um, dirty sand. Dirty sand is like a rough sandpaper. It's actually kind of a, a brown tone here. It, it, it'll dry a, a little bit of a different color. I'm gonna put that in the corner here. Okay. 
I don't have much there stenciled, so you, you, won't, you won't need much powder. Okay, and I'm gonna put these away. Normally, I would put these immediately back in my jars, but because I'm doing a demo with people watching, I'd rather they watch me make something than clean up. Actually, so how much do you apply? What sort of oh, oh, in terms of the um, yes. uh, amount of powder? Mm -hmm. um, I tend to over pour okay. because I know that I'm just going to pour it off into a piece of paper and it'll go back in. But you really don't need much. And what really what many people do, and there's kind of the easy way to do it, is if you just pour powder right there, mm -hmm. which is on, say, one side of it, when you tip it off, the powder just rolls right down and covers everything else. So let's do the um, deep sea first. And you'll see, let's see, you'll see the shift to this really, it's got a really vivid sheen to it. It's just really glassy. And one of the things about these, the formulation of these powders is they melt very fast. So that's certainly done. And it's, again, it's got this great sheen. And if you look close to it, um, it's not just green. You know, it's got this beautiful green, but there's some blacks and there's some taupes and there's some um, there's some blues in there. So it, it's really variable when you look close. This is the Rocky Road. This is going to look so different. And again, it's melting really quite fast. And again, if you look at this close, you see it's not just black. It's, it's actually got quite a number of grains in it. And when you touch it later, but not now, because you don't want to burn yourself, um, it's going to feel gritty, whereas this one's going to feel smooth. And this is the um, dirty sand. This one is the one that is the most gritty. And you'll see the color shift as it melts. It's got a little bit of metallic in there, so there's a shine. So it's kind of um, sort of a feminine masculine sandpaper, masculine feminine. And when it dries, it's also extremely gritty, um, just like that. One of the ideas behind the powders was to make them really variable. So some are so smooth, and then some are just really, really rocky. All right, so I'm done with stenciling. I love stenciling, though, with uh, embossing. Um, actually, I'm not going to be done. Let's not be done. I'm never done. That's that's the thing. Uh, the wonderful thing about stencils is that they're sort of self. Um, I don't know. They're not self-healing. They're not self-cleaning. But you know, I can go back up and repositionable. Yes, easily. So I'm just to layer over it. And what we're going to do is we're going to try something a little different. I want to add some other color to it, but what I don't want to do is cover it. So I am going to try to get something really organic. So I'm going to take a rubber stamp. And traditionally what we do is we just rubber stamp directly onto our uh, substrate. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the embossing um, ink from the pad onto the rubber stamp and I'm going to press it through the stencil. So that in theory, when it works, um, we're going to have those spots just in the area of the stencil so that when I put a different color Let's use that uh, Embossing powder over it if this is going to work the way it's supposed to it's going to um, Only stick where we have placed uh, The ink that's on the back of the stamp So this is ancient amber We're going to try another color And just see if this worked And we're live, so we hope it does. There we go. Worked exactly like I wanted it to. We're gonna put this aside and pray this doesn't blow away. And then I'm gonna heat that. So we just get a much more interesting layered look, which is really what mixed media is all about. Put that away. So it's, it's sort of a way to take a stencil that everybody would be using and kind of make it your own. Uh, I love that stamp um, because it's just sort of organic and loose. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take it and I'm going to ink it again and I'm going to um, just very randomly 
just press it onto the surface in some different places. You can see it's not mounted. Um, I don't want a really perfect impression. And I'm looking at and thinking about what colors I might want. And what I think I'm going to do is kind of make it a little bit variable and get some mix going. So I have all these just sitting here waiting for something. So I'm just going to um, not make my mistake. I'm going to get my piece of paper to place under. And I know I'm going to end up with a little bit of a mix at the end underneath so I can't pour them back into the jars. But I'm going to try to put some of that there, shake that around a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to get some of this stuff. At this point, I don't even know what I have. I'm just pouring. So you get a variable look rather than anything sort of more standard. And then we might as well take some of this stuff, right? Use it up, we got it. The other thing that this does, because I've used lots of different color embossing powders here, is that it'll integrate your piece because all the ones I've used before, I'm placing in the center. So it's gonna kind of be very, um, almost uh, making it a more a cohesive piece of art. Yeah, so let's just see what happens. I'm gonna put that aside, and heat it up. And since we've added four different colors, you kind of don't know what you're going to get where. And that's what I really like. Okay, my motto, does anybody remember my motto? More is more. So um, to me, what I have is I have a patch of that there, a patch of that there, and a patch of that there. And that's not what I'm going for. So I am just going to let that dry. Um, and cool off. I'm gonna go back to the stamp and I'm gonna do more stamping and then use the rest of that powder. The only thing I'm trying to avoid mostly is the keyhole, which is, I'm gonna get a little bit on it, but I don't want much. So let's just get a little bit at the edges, maybe make it more interesting. Let's place it on here. Let's take this. This is now four powders, so this is really an individual mix. I'm just going to pour it on. Some of them are shiny, some of them are rough. Extra. Say again? Exactly. This stuff is gold, even when it's not gold. Yeah, this is more of what I wanted. When you work in layers, you know, if it doesn't work the first layer, it just means you're going to Shift it up for the second layer. All right, let's see what this looks like now. I think sometimes people get caught up in being a uh, little uh, overthinkers, and you start thinking which color, that color, that doesn't go with that color, would this be better with that color? And the truth is, is that, especially if you're working in mixed media, a lot of things work, and sometimes it's better not to, it's always better not to overthink with mixed media, because you just begin to create things that are just more organic and, and, and a little bit more magical. So the, uh, the last thing I'm gonna do, uh, with the embossing powders is I'm going to work around the edge. Um, I believe that when things are edged or framed out, they just they have a sense of being finished. So I'm going to take the pad and kind of roughly work it around. Wherever the embossed stencil designs are, I'm not going to go around the edge. So I'm just going around the area where those aren't. I'm trying to be kind of loose with it and not too exacting. And then I'll go in the corner just a little, maybe a little further. That's the only corner that's free. 
And then I'm gonna go back in with Rocky Road. I love that one as, a, as something to put around the edges, which means I have to find Rocky Road. Rocky Road. And this is gonna go and I'm gonna start pour, pouring it around the edge. And it's gonna stick wherever the pad was. I can put this back in after because it's all one flavor. And now I'm going to just heat that up and you'll see uh, what happens at the edges. So I often go around the edge of a piece with an ink pad, um, like many people do, and I think that this, when you do it with the embossing powder like that, it's, it kind of just takes it to a whole different level. Um, and this one, again, the Rocky Road, it, it's it's very rough and textural, but it has the sheen. So it's, hey, how you doing? So it's got this really nice combination, and I do feel like when you've done it that way and you've um, put the um, edge around it, it just feels a little bit more finished. So what I'm gonna do is put this aside for later when I'm not embossing. And probably what I'll do is work on some strip right here and put a word and maybe call it a day. Um, although knowing me, I'll probably get out a journal pen and do some doodling and all that stuff. So these are my uh, baked texture embossing powders from Emerald Creek. I thank you all for watching. Um, if you have any questions, you can go to my website, sethapter.com, and you can contact me there. I'm more than happy to share and answer any, uh, share information and answer any questions you might have. Thank you for taking the time to stay with us today. Bye now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give our video a thumbs up and subscribe to Scrap Time Videos on YouTube. In the meantime, here are a couple other videos you might be interested in watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.